percent of the people one year from now will not be here. And I start ripping up the names. She won't be here. He won't be here. They won't be here. And they're like, Grant, man, is there another way for you to do this? I said, no, bro, there isn't. I don't need to tell you. You know, this, this ain't a team. This shit is happening because of me and only because of me. And, and, and it's, if I leave here for two weeks, this thing will fall apart. So uh, Matt Smith is an amazing human being. He's a leader. He's a great leader, but he's the nice guy leader. Okay, I didn't have time to be a leader. I, I, all I was doing there, and this is what I was trying to tell the viewer, but they wouldn't let the story go through. My job was not to be a leader or to build a team. My job was to go into a town, build an evaluation, a company's valuation to a million dollars, and leave. And so the girls, if you watched all the show, they're going to be like, oh, they built a team and their business is going to go on. That, that just wasn't my style. My style was to go in, exceed my target. Did you did you finish the show? No, to I'm not Norway, so I didn't get to see the whole of it. Oh yeah, just just download Discovery Plus, okay? okay. And you can see it on your phone, right? You can see it this way. You'll see all 13 episodes. Oh, and any great. of you that want to go. me hit a five and a half million dollar evaluation because that's that leadership my leadership is not to like the warm and fuzzy build the take results big results and then find a handful of people that can keep this going when i leave grant this is doc thank, thank you so you. much for your time with us today i have a question for you um it does change the topic just a little bit um this question is I'm gonna go to the Man, when are we gonna get on that vaccine, man? Right. <laughs> we coming for you, bro. We coming for you. Um, so check this out. So your finance people, they come to you and they look. We have a fifty million dollar prop, and the solution ultimately is for you to purchase a jet. My question is, um, did you dream of owning your own jet? Number one, and number two was like this is doc i'm done speaking oh man doc that's a great question so let me just tell you the story now now I, I didn't know what you i thought you were really giving me a real situation here but so let me tell you the story on it the, 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 my accountant came to me and said hey we have a big problem and it, it's in the neighborhood of what you said right i said guys there's got to be a way to solve the problem a way to solve the problem i said there's always a way to solve the problem i can give the money away and i gotta solve my problem you know, and I saw the problem. And I said, "What? Wait a minute. Let me go. Let me check into that." And there was that year. There was an accelerated depreciation, meaning you could write off the entire purchase of a jet. Uh, if I took delivery in December, I could write off the entire purchase and offset all taxes. And I'm like, "Thank you very much." They got out of the room, and I started calling uh, Gulfstream. So. Uh, <laughs> you know, you, do you know the rest of the story where Gulfstream said they don't have a jet? They're like, we don't have a jet. We can't deliver a jet to you for two years. No, I and so, so I wired them a check for the full amount of a new jet. And then they called me up and said, man, we have, this has never happened to us in the history of Gulfstream. And the guy called back and said, I sit, sitting over in your wire, I wired it to you. And he's like, oh, we got it, man. He's like, this is, nobody's ever done this. I said, good, go find me a jet. He's like, Grant, there are no jets. The president of the company know what I just did. And you guys decide whether you want to send that money back to me or not. And he called me 45 minutes later. We found you a jet. And um, now the first time I got in that beast, bro, like it was like, it was a trip. No, nobody ever asked. Like it was, it's one of the biggest events of my life. Like it, it's something I can go back to right now and remember how I felt. it was. It was crazy, dude. Knowing it was mine. I mean, this is mine to fly in. We don't charter it out. Nobody ever, nobody else has ever been on that jet unless I'm in it. And it was a fan accomplishment and solving a problem. And 
kind of a middle finger to the IRS too. Like, you know what? I ain't paying you guys. I'm going to, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use this. I'm going to use it for my expansion rather than giving you guys money to waste. And so before anybody in the room hates me, just understand, I pay a lot of taxes already. I pay, we pay $40 million a year in property taxes every year. So I'm doing my fair share on taxes. Anything I can do to reduce my bill, I will, I have, and I will continue to do so. Thank you for asking me that, dog. Now to the back. Congratulations. Yeah. Beautiful, yeah. beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. I have a question when we get a chance. Yes, go ahead, please. Uh, this is Jodine. Hey, Grant, I know you, uh, you sat in the rooms with you and, um, when you were doing the undercover billionaire and given the background. First question I have is, were you able to get the um, uh, footage that was on the floor yet? No. <laughs> and then uh, deeper on that, I, as a parent, we always hope that we're teaching, you know, lessons to our children. What is the one lesson that you saw that you were able to give your children um, during that experience to you that you didn't anticipate? Uh, you know, that I didn't quit. You know, my kids, I think my kids, how hard it was for me um, when I did the show. In fact, I told Discovery that I would have my kids there within two days doing the show with me. By the time I got there, I'm like, there's no way I can bring my kids or my wife here. Everybody will recognize me. So I was already having to kind of dip, dip and dab just to stay out of, you know, being discovered. So, you know, I told Elena after two or three days, I'm like, hey, look, don't tell them yet. Because they thought they were going to be able to go and be there with me. I said, don't tell them yet, but there's no way you guys ever get to come out here. So, um, you know, but not quitting, I think, was a, a, an important thing that I did with them. Shaving my head, I think, was important. They hated that. They didn't like it at all. They didn't trust the crew, by the way. Neither one of my kids are like, I don't trust these people. These are bad people. And... Um, um, so shaving my head, I think, was important for the kids because when I did, they looked at me, my daughter, my oldest daughter looked at me when I shaved my head. I'm completely bald. She's like, you're still you. And I think that that was a huge lesson for my kids to understand that your looks don't define you. That I was still to them who I am, regardless of whether I had hair or no hair. And that was a really cool, cool moment with my kids. That's awesome. And then when you were, um, or after leaving, have you retained any relationships with those people in Pueblo or is it just oh, kind yeah. of? Yeah, Matt, Matt Smith and I, the owner of the company, uh, are still good friends. I saw him, I don't know, three or four months ago. And uh, I, I expect that Matt and his wife and I will ma maintain friendship for a very, very long time. Awesome. Thanks for sharing that. Thank you for asking. Hey, Grant, how are you doing? Uh, this is Nuna. I have a good question for you. Um, since you have daughters, uh, what is the biggest lessons you've learned from them? Oh, my God, man. My kids, man. My kids, I learn from them all the time, right? Like, um, I you know, I learned that I, I think a lot of my childhood has been restored watching my kids. A lot of the things I knew when I was five and six and seven years old about myself, that, that, that I already had intelligence when I was five, when I was very, very young, you know, and, and nobody ever acknowledged that in me. And, and I think that that really caused me problems later on, you know, that I was treated like sit there, be seen and not heard. We, we don't do that to our kids. So, um, you know, uh, you know, I've, I, I just learn a lot watching them and then, and, and I learn, I, I, you know, I, I discover parts of myself that I had forgotten, you know, the, my, my, you know, how much I can love and what is really important and what's not. And, and life cycle, I tell you that the negative part about having kids is, you, you have to confront your own life cycle. So, you know, you're like, okay, they're now they're 10 and I'm 63 and now they're 20 and I'm 73 and they're 30 and I'm okay. Game over. So 
some of it's really, really good. Some of it's like, you know, constant reminders. Grant and Natasha again in the purple. How do, does the kids feel like, I, I'm, maybe the security detail, do they feel like they are not able to be kids? I know that they probably have to have a high level of security. Are they are they okay with that, or do they feel like, oh, I'm tired of, tired of this, or what do you think? No, no, they don't. You know what? They're super cool about it. Like, we did an, we did an event in Miami uh, for 34,000 people, and we had an RV. There was 34,000 people in a stadium. And the kids, they had their own little place, and they, they wanted to go out and shake hands and meet people and talk to people and wave to people. They did that for four days. So we've really acclimated them on being very social. Um, we teach them to talk to strangers. We say, look, they're not strangers. Doesn't mean a bad thing. It means you don't know them. Your job is to get to know everybody. You can say hi to everybody. You don't need to trust anybody, but you need to say hi to everybody. You need to be nice to everybody, and you need to be you need to be aware and conscious of who the two percenters are. And they're like, well, who are the two percenters? Those are the people that call us. 98% of the people are freaking awesome. So, but you need to watch out for evil. It does exist. It's a very, very tiny part of the population, but you only need that percentage to mess everything up. So, you know, they're, they're very astute. They're very aware. They're trained. They're extremely well-trained. I don't mean school educated, by the way, they're homeschooled, um, but they're, they're extremely aware of situations. They're, they know how to defend themselves. They know what to do in s scenarios. Uh, and we don't put them in environments where they're unsafe. So they are, there is always eyeballs on them. Um, you know, but they're, they're super cool kids too. So, I mean, both of them have spoke to audiences. They've written their own speeches. They've talked to, like for them to talk to a hundred people is harder than for them to talk to 34,000. They both delivered speeches to massive audiences at full stadiums at the age of six and eight which gives them a huge, huge advantage over other people. Because if you can communicate to that many people confidently, even though you're scared, man, there, there's nothing like public speaking that, that, that builds confidence uh, at an early age. Hey, Grant, this is uh, Richard. A uh, quick question for you about uh, what, are, what are some strategies or maybe some tips that you can share with us? Uh, about building your personal brand. Hey, Richard, thank you for that. Um, man, you guys, you guys are just, you guys are awesome, man. I, I did, I just came in here to say hi. Now, now it's one oh six in the morning. <laughs> so, um, you know, well, I've never tried to build a brand. Just so you guys know, like, I, I've been trying to build a life, and and I would I would suggest to people to to maybe spend less time trying to build a brand. And, and build a life you want and, and have a voice and be authentic and, and, you know, take a position. Like my brand has probably been pretty polarizing. For like I wasn't to be polarizing in order to build a brand. I just, that's who I am, right? I want my life to stand for something. And I don't, you know, I don't, I'm going to take a position. If I don't agree with somebody, I'm going to say, hey, you know, I don't get what you're saying. I don't understand. Where, where are you getting your data from? What you're saying doesn't make sense to me. Can you just explain it to me, please? Like, so I'm not intentionally trying to polarize. Well, you know, when people tell me to save money, I'm like, for what? Save money for what? I watched my mom do that her whole damn life, man. She never had anything. My mom did everything right to end up with nothing except fear. So when you observe things in life and they don't work anymore, Richard, man, I would start telling people, be willing to be wrong, by the way, be willing to change your mind. But that's my brand. My brand is, you know, I see things, talk about them. And then num number one, I, I, I talk about things that don't seem right to me. But second thing, because the first thing you're not going to pull off the first thing if you don't do the second thing. You know, I spend 95% of every day doing everything I can to be successful. Because nobody's going to listen to your brand, your position, or your opinion if you're not successful. If you're not successful, people just think you're a whack, even though you might be right. But you you add an opinion to success, 
or success to an opinion, and then and then you can actually start changing people's way of thinking. So, uh, the last thing I would say is like you got to be willing to like be on all these channels. Like me being with you guys tonight, I'll probably make make a couple of supporters share nights. A couple of people that maybe didn't like me will be like, oh, I get this guy now. And so, Manny, I want to thank you and Steve and Elliot for for hosting this room and having me here. Um, so that I could even for who I am. So you guys could decide what my brand is. Cause I really don't even know what it is. I don't know what my brand is. Richard, what is it to you? Like if you were to describe my brand, what is it? Well, you know, Grant, I heard you speak, uh, the last time you were here and obviously tonight and you know, what we see on Instagram and, and all those things, um, you know, you, we have perceptions of you, but like you said, you gained a couple of supporters. You did that with me last time because I'm a father with a 12 year old daughter and man, I get you. I mean, and being a dad to a girl is a totally different ball game, man. And that's the only girl that I've got, only child that I got. And uh, when I hear you speak about your daughter, that's just the way I feel about mine. And so, yeah, it just took me, you know, to hear that, you know, to hear you guess about your children to make me understand this guy's legit, man. And so whatever you see on Instagram and, you know, I watched, I think one of your, um, uh, one of your reels today and you were car and you have the plane behind you and the tailored jacket and, you know, looking fresh. I ain't, I ain't hate at all, man. I feel you, man. There's nothing wrong with that, but to hear you speak in here, like a real genuine person, someone that homes kids, you know, someone that is building confidence and, and have teaching them skills lifelong. You know, there's a book that I read, and, and I strongly recommend it if you when you get a chance. It's called uh, Strong Father, Strong Daughter. It's by Dr. Meg Meeker, and she talks about raising daughters, not not to be cis, not strong women with humility, not humility in a bad sense, understanding their divine purpose in this world. And so uh, just some thoughts. So when I think of your brand now, you know, I'm Instagram, you know, showing yourself being successful, but... Listen to you. Listen to you here speak now. I know that your 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 brand is what you do and Jack, which is success. But you as a man, you know, mad respect, man. I'm here in Texas too, so I get you on all the vaccines and a lot of those levels too. So hope that answers your question. Hey, Grant. no, no, thank you so much. And you know, I just we 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 had this shot. A photographer came out, a plane, a helicopter, and the in the Cullinan, right? And I'm in this dope suit, and 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 you just described that. I'm like, I cannot imagine those things not be in mind and my kids seeing me as they are. Like when you, when you described all that, Richard, I'm like, wow. Cause I know the photo you're talking about. Right. And I'm like, what if that shit wasn't mine? And my kids had to see that. Right. And, and I know that's going on. I know there's people out there. The kids are like, not actually what you look like, <laughs> <laughs> you know? And, and so that's got to be confusing to the kids, right? See, my, my kids, man, they just, they see me. I'm the same guy all the time. I'm the same guy. The one regret I have is my, my cursing it, is it gets sloppy around the kids. But, um, you know, they know I'm the same guy. With, I was with Donald Trump last week playing golf, whether I'm with him or whether I'm with, and I could be with Joe Biden, by the way. It doesn't matter to me, dude. I just want to be around power. I mean. I'm not a Democrat or a Republican. I just want a little bit. Of, I just want a pop. I want a shot at, 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 you know, at a break. And, and I, I suggest everybody here, man, go, go get close to power, man. Get you when Manny runs for president, go get up in his shit. <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> Hey baby. Man. Can I ask a question? Hey Grant. We, a question. We, we, hold on. I just wanted to say thank you to Grant. We really respect you coming to this room, Grant. I know that I know there was the issue with Manny before. It really shows you the character what, that you have to come. What down issue? Down. I don't. What are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, exactly. exactly. <laughs> no, yeah. Look, let me just tell you guys this: there's never an issue with me and another person, and I don't think there was an issue with Manny to me. Am I right, Manny? Not at all, Grant. So you know what? It was that little black dude, Buck. Yeah. It was that. How you feeling, Buck? You're underneath the bus right now. (laughs) It was that little that Buck dude starting trouble with the white guy in the Mexican. Black and rich, 
his best comedy moment in the seventies with a cigarette in his hand. Nice crispy afro. Do, do, hey, do you have that set yet, man? You know what? How about this? Right? I mean, no beat, right? But let me show you. Let me give you. A, let me give you a, a jewel. Just give right. us a glimpse. Yo, maybe you got a rolly as a goalie, but maybe, maybe you still see nickels down. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? Look, you want to grow up? You got to show up. Okay, you want to get your game on? You got to get your game on. You know what I'm saying? You cannot change. You cannot get better. You can't get rich. You can't create wealth. The same way you are. You got to go get. You got to go get in seats where that money is. Come hang out with me. Okay. UPG.social. No, we need to redo that, Buck. That's not, that's not raw players, enough, man. Players, I did, some, no, Buck, that ain't good enough, man. I got to get you another. I got to spit one of those a lot cleaner. Nah, man. You <laughs> hey, Manny, Manny got a freestyle for you, Grant. I don't know. Let's go. Come on, man. Freestyle. What you got? Manny freestyle. Are you, you going to freestyle back? <laughs> I'll try, man. No. You, you man. <laughs> Hey, you know what? Hey, Doc, can you take care of the medical bills for for uh, Kid Blake here? Because I'm gonna, I'm gonna, he's gonna, he's gonna feel walking back with the lines. I'm gonna draw up and spit. Oh yeah. It's gonna be like something I even people don't even want me to. Say. Manny's his notepad right now to read his rhyme. I must warn you, Manny. On top of my mind. On you, Manny. I'll sit there and make you go crazy with my beautiful lines. You'll start to wonder, how, when is he gonna quit? Because I'm fucking amazingly he's gonna spit. God damn it, I got a loogie on my app. God, I'm sick and tired of that. <laughs> oh my god, man. Come on, Manny. Come on, Grant. I know you got that. Thing. Yeah, man. I was sitting here listening to the Manny, man, sitting huh. here on my ass in my fanny. Woo. I was like, oh my god, he can blow. He can blow that guacamole. <laughs> <laughs> don't go there again, Grant. Don't do it. It's so good. It's the battle, man. Let's go. Come on. Come on, yeah. man. Drop it like it's hot. Drop it like it's hot. I remember Grant once said his girl wouldn't date him because he was short. And then one time he said he's in the plane. How short am I now? Yeah. No, so, I ain't going to sit here and clown. Uh oh. That's right. Well, you that guys, was a tight line, bro. That was a tight line. That was pretty tight. That though. was hella tight. No, that you were. Never mind. You. It came from you, though. You yeah, said, yeah. How short yeah. am I now? Yeah. Yeah. No, I told my wife that because she didn't want to be with me because I was too short, right? So we hit fifty-one thousand feet in that golf stream, and I'm like, how short am I now, baby doll? <laughs> <laughs> hey. hey. We, got Manny, we got Manny on stage. Y'all know I usually do this with you. We got Manny on stage. And we got Grant the man holding it down. When it get hot, you know you are gonna need a fan. The most of the stuff you may not understand, but you gotta know it's a part of the plan. Now, when I'm with my man Grant, we ride the jet. Now that's as live as it get. When my man Manny come through, you know how the rest of the crew do. I mean, everybody on stage, everybody here, Steve, Elliot, Elizabeth, we all do it right. And at the end of the night, we make sure our positive is tight. Because that's what we're here for. We call it network, network. And if you put the network, check out what the jet work. Asking Grant. My job. Drop the mic. Drop the mic. Right, right. Man, I heard they were talking trash about me earlier, though, Ken. What was it, man? You, you already know when they, the, the, the best way to come for the change is to call them out. Man. You know that old tactic, man. The best the best way to call in the king is to call it out, man. So you already know it's going to be it's gonna be fire where you go. But you know what it is? You know what I'm saying? It's like now there's a Manny, I'm, I'm, it, went from, it went from the gloves to the water portfolio right now. You know what I mean? It's between J.T. Fox and, and Grant Cardone. Grant. But, dude, I don't I don't even know how that guy thinks he can, like, have that argument. Like, it's like John hit me, and John's like, I don't even know what this guy's thinking. Like, this doesn't make any sense. Hey, I got a, someone sent me a clip on, of the recording of the room, so let me play was, what he was so saying, okay? So alone. Let me, let me, let me, let me play his exact words. What about you, Grant? Hold on. Uh-oh. 
<laughs> so I just want to play you what was played yeah. in the other room. It was that was a recording from the other room sent to me. I guess that was the guy that was speaking about you. That's hilarious. But that's supposed to be now that's a big battle on Clubhouse right now. Literally, he's like it's crazy. This crypto alone will be you. Like his, he he's, he's he went into how like you're not next, you're not liquid. So. It is the biggest battle I think right now. Yeah. Well, let's, let's put the attention on for the many people that are here um, and the many people that are messaging me. Can I ask Grant a question? Can I ask Grant a question? Well, free. If you have a question to ask, come unmute your mic and ask a question. You can see how you get the attention pulled some, to another direction. And I don't want you to be stuck in an intersection. So ask your question now before you get stuck in the class. <laughs> <laughs> Thank John, you, man. I really appreciate Thank it. You. We have Jeff and then uh, Dr. Mark. Go ahead, Jeff. Hey, uh, Grant, I just want to, hey, Grant, I want to know what's next. I mean, you know, you're top of the heap, you know, you were exhilarated jumping in that jet, but do you have like a right hand man to take you to the next level? Somebody like when they, somebody asks you a question of Asia, like, do you, are you, do you have an army of, like, a, what's yeah, next we, for you? Like, what's, yeah, we have, we have, uh, um, I don't know. We got five or 600 employees right now. And so I have one, two, three, four, five partnerships that, that are guys that can run something and gals that can run something. Uh, we're going to grow this thing big, dude. I'm going to end up with five or 6,000 employees at the next stop. So that's when I tell people I'm hiring people that, that don't, that, that don't, you don't have to vaccinate because I'm hiring. It's not, it's not that I'm being negative on the vaccine. It's that I'm trying to hire talent. So we're looking. We're we're hiring C level executives right now. We have a license program that's worldwide, where we we are looking for ten thousand licensees around the world to use my name, my brand, my likeness, and my products and services to deliver those in their markets. So that's GrantCardoneLicensee.com. Um, we have we're, we just started an incubator, 10xincubator.com. We think we do it. Uh, we have um, almost almost 500 employees working on that project in India uh, with my partner um, Jared, and I got another Jared, Jared Lant, who's running all our online platforms. And Jared, me and Jared together for uh, I don't know eight years, eight nine years now. Brandon Brandon Dawson runs Cardone Ventures. Uh, we're gonna. We're gonna we're gonna scale companies from if they're making a million bucks, scale them to ten million. Companies that are making ten million, we're trying to gonna get them a hundred million. And the goal is to take some of these companies public in the future, if not take Cardone Enterprises public. So then there's the real estate division, right? So we're trying to bring on some heavy hitters in the real estate space right now that could give me access to bigger bigger deals and more debt, so that I could do you know. 4,000 units at a time rather than 400. So, um, you know, we just had a meeting with this group in Mexico. They're extremely well connected down there. He's connected also in Colombia, Uruguay, Argentina, Venezuela. Like, I, I want to go down. To, I want to bring 10X to South America. So, yeah. Like, if you think you're that guy, Jeff, let me know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, hey. I'm following you, man. I'm in. Hey, I put my hey, hey Grant. Can you uh, maybe look at the other resumes? I put my resume in, and you can see it because it says I prefer guacamole and I make margarita sushi <laughs> style. That's my resume. Dude, dude, that. dude, that's our favorite. <laughs> the, hey, guacamole is our favorite food on the weekends. Pico de gallo. Yeah, so I put that application in. Hopefully, it gets accepted. Yeah. Well, I just rather your friendship, Manny. Wow, positive. I do. That's I do fun. that you so, will be acting in Indonesia soon. Uh, yeah, Indonesia. yeah that, that's the part of the world that we absolutely love. You know, mm -hmm. we spent our, our best probably month was spent in Thailand. And mm -hmm. we, we've only seen a little part, part of my kids. Uh, we all have the Indonesia, that entire region on our on our uh, to do list. Great. All right, thank you, Grant. Appreciate that, uh, Dr. Mark. Hey, Grant. 
um, with Dr. Mark Chavez to help him DM uh, right under Manny, three columns under White Coat. You mentioned something that you spend 95% of your day getting better. I, I, I really like, and I think the audience would like to know, what is your process to figure out what exactly are you doing time and how are you making that time better every day? Oh, excuse me. Robert Kiyosaki, the, the co-author, uh, the author of Cordez in the audience, you should, we should all encourage him to come up. We were just talking to him earlier today. Sorry. To... That's that my question. Come up, Robert. I just, I, I was, while Manny was rich when he unmuted, I was already DMing him in the back chat and saying the honor of your presence. We'd love to have you up here, Robert. You're amazing. Uh, I was, I was supposed to do a gig with Robert when COVID hit. I was going to, I was going to meet him in uh, Phoenix and do cast, I think. And uh, so to answer your question, uh, doctor, um, the health MD, Mark, Shabazz, um, you know, what I think I said was I didn't spend 95% of my time trying to get better. I spent 95% of my time on offense, uh, trying to advance my success. Right. So like I'm trying to, I'm not playing defense during the day trying to get something. So I'm not worried about my budgets or spending money or not spending money. I'm trying to spend most of my time on attack, getting something, getting a deal, getting getting new money, selling tickets, uh, advancing some of our statistics. So whatever it is, if it's real estate or if it's an event we're doing, I'm trying to fill seats, grab real estate, add investors, get deals, make contacts, create new relationships. And then 5% of my time is spent on defense, right? P playing pure defense. And that also includes my health, my spiritual well-being. I'm trying to advance my spiritual well-being every day. Uh, I've been sleeping in lately. I'd like to tell you I've been getting up early, but for the past month, I've been sleeping in and purposely sleeping in, just getting a little more rest. And, uh, and I'm probably spending a good hour to an hour and a half on my health right now in, in really building my immune system, making sure it's strong with oxygen, um, more time on a bike, really kicking up my lungs, get my lungs really, really boosted and uh, use an infrared light um, to uh, make sure my immune system's in the best shape I c it can be. Yeah, that's, that's, that's dope that you, that you bike. Tell them how you bike with your kid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fuck, that was funny, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that, I think that's cool, though, man. That was, that was, when I seen you biking with them, I was like, nah, that's my dude right there. He makes sure he biking with his kids. Yeah, man. yeah, and I use my kids, too. Anytime I'm having trouble, I use my kids. Like, like you know, if I, me and John Leisure get in an argument, I have my kids to bring a call in. You know? Uh-oh. That's why they're ready to beat me up. No, I'm just <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so... I don't know. Did Robert come up? Um, he said he's busy playing a cash flow game right now. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Come on. Do you have a question? What a legend. What a, what, what, a, what, a, what a career Robert's had, though, huh? Oh, absolutely. His career is phenomenal. Grand yeah. yeah. Super genius. Yeah. Super genius. Cash Amazing. Flow is awesome. Uh, Grant, my question is on team building. Uh, who's your uh, organization and the size of it? How important is team building? And how do you do it? And what's your um, feel on celebration? How do you celebrate to keep the spirit up so they keep moving in the right direction for you? Yeah, thank you. So um, number one, we don't we don't build we don't work on team as much as we work on culture. So I think the culture the team will be a result of the culture. Uh, if any of you ever get a chance to do our 10x headquarters day, where you can come visit for the whole day our our organization. I promise you, you will, I don't care who you are, what company you work for, or how big it is or how great it is. You will have an experience in our company that you, you have, you, you'll be like, this is the way to run a company. And I don't take credit for that. I have some great executives that have created that around me. Um, so I would work on culture and understand that the team is going to be a result of the culture that you create. Uh, how we, how we celebrate. Like, man, we, 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 we shine attention on the victories and we ignore the losses. 
And I know a lot of people talk about how they, you know, they learn from their failures. Uh, we, 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 we actually, you know, we spend a lot of time looking at how we won and it's quick though. It's a quick celebration and boom, then we're like, lean on that again. If it worked once, it'll work twice. If it's worked, if it worked twice, it'll work 10 times. So anything I can, anytime I can win doing one thing, I don't like, I'm just repeat that activity again. So we celebrate real quick and then, then we lean on it again and see if we can do that 10 times. That's what 10 X. So, um, the last thing I'll say is we, we don't put a lot of attention on people that aren't winning. So if you want to be ignored in the organization, very easy to be ignored in my place. Just don't do anything. I love it. That's brilliant. That's yeah. Thing. yeah. <laughs> very the negative. Um, we have a question from Elliot. Oh, thanks so much, uh, Steve. And uh, Grant, really appreciate you taking so much time here. Uh, I, you mentioned earlier uh, Cordona University. I, I, I mean, I'm familiar with it. Uh, for Talk a little bit more about the program for the youth that you have and a little bit of the details on that. Yes. Yeah, so what we're doing is we're, we're, we're funding the process right now. Uh, Grant Cardone Foundation is a, we've raised money there to, to uh, help kids that don't have, uh, particularly the father at home, uh, but in the marginalized, left out of the, left out, system didn't work for them, education didn't help. Um, we're creating Cardone University for kids so that, I think I said seventh or eighth graders earlier, but it's really kids starting at even years old. So what we're doing right now, in the information I've created there, follow-up, marketing, funnels, uh, how to make money online, how to close a deal, how to negotiate, how to follow a customer up, how to do public speaking, how to have confidence. We're going to take all that material that I created and have used in the marketplace for, you know, decades. Um, we're going to take that and we're going to have kids deliver that content as kids would because kids wouldn't talk the way I do. And so we're going to have kids from all walks of life. We're looking for kids that speak languages, kids that look different from other kids and make it very inclusive. And many of you here can, you can help me a lot with it. If they know Cardone university, or maybe you're on Cardone university, start having your kids watch it. And maybe your to be delivery of Cardone university. So it's, We'll scale this up to 35, 38 languages. I think is what we have targeted, 38 languages. And um, have kids from na different nations and deliver the content that um, created and that would extend my legacy beyond my lifetime. That's amazing. I, I, um, I would love to read I have some ideas. I don't know if it would scale all the way down to that age, but certainly middle school to high school. Uh, for sort of mindset training and things. So uh, yeah, and look, it's amazing. A 17 year old is not gonna listen to a, a seven year old. So uh, we, we, we get, like it's a, it's a project to work. A program. We funded a program for 350,000 South Africans and it was extremely well. We know if we can stuff about, but here the everything you're doing. Grant Cadone, thank you so much. Are you going to be
see her through the weekend. Uh, Depends on how big the opportunities are, player. Well, I got a, I got a big opportunity for you. I got a pool party this weekend, and I would love for you to attend. That's a big. Who opportunity. is that? Who is that, man? <laughs> this, this, this Dale speaking. Dale, man, is Rich, Rich, Rich gonna be there, man? Rich. Rich, which, 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 which rich? I got a lot of riches. Rich, on rich there. forever, man. Rich forever. Hey, you know what? <laughs> I, I actually, hey, it's crazy you saying that because I actually tried to get his house to host to my pool party, but it was booked. How about so, how about Tyrese? Tyrese gonna be there? No, nah, not Tyrese. <laughs> I got a I got a couple rappers and you know a couple you know, a couple people that are gonna be there. A couple important people. So. Yeah. Has but anybody you, seen Ty, it, has anybody seen Tyrese on the app? I have. Yeah, I'm I'm with him, yes. I have. Man, that's Ty, that's my that's my that's my brother. You see Tyrese selling buck, telling buck because looking for him, man. That's yeah, man. Brother, I haven't seen brother. Tyrese in so long, man. Y'all tell Tyrese I miss him. Grant Cardone misses him. Yeah, that's I think I seen him once too. So. Yeah, but Dale, send, send me send me, hit me on the back channels, man. Man, for real, I got you. Thank you, man. I got you. Thank you. Grant, you've been here over two hours. We really appreciate your time. We want to be respectful for your time. At any point you got to cut out, just let us know. The, you know, our pleasure having you here. Thank you. But Grant knows that, though. Grant is having a good time. He wants to stay for another yeah. hour. He yeah. Him, and when are you coming to California? Um, the broken know. state. <laughs> it is, man. It's a shame, too. The most beautiful broken state. Yeah. Most beautiful, one of the most beautiful places in the world. It's a shame what they've done to that place. It just goes to show you, you know, when you get too much regulation, you can just destroy something. Um, but I'll probably be coming to California uh, this month. Okay. Look, you guys have been Great. phenomenal. You guys Thank have been you. phenomenal tonight, Manny. Thank you so much, guys. I'm gonna go. Get, I'm gonna go rest my body so I can get up and try to go win again tomorrow. I probably won't, but I'll try. And uh, hey, Grant, I got, I got one last question. Last of the planet. Okay. Phil, was that Phil? That's Phil. Thanks, yeah, Steve. Phil, Phil. Thank Phil. you, Manny. I'm so, I'm so, so sorry, Grant. Uh, hold on, you already you already asked the question. You, you, you already asked the question. Okay, okay, got it. You got to you tell me. We want to be respectful for Grant. Thank you so much, Grant, for your time. Really appreciate you. You know you're welcome. Man, why'd y'all shut that guy down like that, man? That wasn't right, man. Yeah, he he just asked the question, Grant, and want to keep want to be fair to everyone. Yeah, well, so what? Yeah, life ain't fair, man. All right. Uh, if, uh, if you uh, want to uh, say extra, then Phil, awesome, well, I'm just man. saying, Doctor Phil, yeah. go ahead, Phil. Thank you got you, it, man. Man. Don't let him Thanks. shut you down, Phil. Don't go let ahead. him shut you down like that, man. Go ahead, Phil. Good. Thanks, you got my back. Thank you so much. So, last question. I've been thinking, I've been looking at a lot of uh, successful people, especially Bezos and, you know, all these people. Do you, ha do you have any ambitions to go to space or anything like that? Has that ever crossed no. you? What do you think about that? No, no, I have none. Dude, I ain't going any place for two fucking minutes. <laughs> like, like I, I, I mean, I mean, I mean, I need a lot more money, too, before I do that. So, those guys that are going up there are like... I mean, they're they're in a wealth class that that's you know completely different from anything I've accomplished. So, um, one, I don't have the money to go there like they do, and number two, I, you know, two minutes. Come, on, I need, I can do that at home. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Phil, Phil, you know what I'm talking about, right? I know, I know exactly what you're talking about. I know, I know it too well. <laughs> So, so, I mean, so anyway, so no, I don't, no, I don't really have any, you know, I, I'd like to solve some of the problems here, but I understand what? that those, those guys, those guys. Did you just like to see Joe in school? Did that say Joe? Yeah. I think it's a hot mic. <laughs> yeah. So I, but I do understand those guys having so much money. They're like, man, shit, we got to go. I got to go out there and see what the hell it looks like. I mean, that's cool. That's cool to have that much dough that you're like, I just want to go up there for two minutes and look back. I mean, that is a massive flex. So.
Zipping, 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 zipping. 10X is the movement. Yeah, 10X Friend. is the movement. 24 Friend, when you, when you in, Grand, when you're in Cali, you, if you're coming to Beverly Hills, you're welcome to the restaurant, our restaurant. So, What's the name of your restaurant? What's the name of it's your restaurant? It's Nua. It's Nua. It's near El Pastillo and Crescent Hotel in Beverly Hills. Oh, right yeah. on the corner. How, how far from the, uh, the Beverly Hills Hotel? Just a couple of minutes. Just there. Yeah, that's so, okay. Well, I, you know, yeah. I used to live. I used to live up in the hills on in Doheny. Oh yeah, I lived in Doheny too. We just moved out to Westwood. That's cool. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. Let me know. You're all good. Hit me, everyone. hit me on the back channel so I know. I'll come get some. What, what kind of food you make over there? It's a lot of Mediterranean foods and oh. uh, you got some kibbe? fish. You got some. You got some kibbe. Kibbe. I, I, I think we have rais <laughs> and. Uh, and and falafel and tahini okay. and uh, okay. some fun yeah. fun stuff. <laughs> good, good, good. I'm hitting you, you on the DMs on Instagram, so you got those pipes. Here. What are, what are the pipes? What are the big pipes? You kebabs. I think kebabs, right? This one you mean? Yeah. No, no. Hookah. Yeah. Hookah. Hookah. You got oh, hookah. 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 I, no, no, we don't go. We don't have hookah. <laughs> okay. 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 Well, maybe right. maybe we can organize something. My hubby is the, the best in. Improvising food, so yeah, I, I got it. I do. I have to. How do I eat when I'm wearing a mask? You don't. You can just okay. step. There's no masks in this one. You, everyone can walk in oh. without. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Cool. We're Grant, free. Grant, we're Grant. Yeah. Before yeah. you, be, Thank before you Grant, before Grant. before you yeah. before you yeah. go, everybody yeah. on the microphone, can y'all? I want everybody to do me one favor. Everybody, open your mics, oh, right? Okay. Just one time. I just want y'all to say. 10X is the movement. I want him to hear this. 10X is the movement. 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 10X is the now we're gonna do. We're gonna be rapping against Ken Blake. You gonna be rapping against me, Manny? Uh -huh. what? You gonna rap against me? You ain't got nothing, bro. The stuff that you had was cooking from that hoe. You wake up and say, "Where's all my dough?" Then you start scratching your head and say, "Shit, she wants me back early." Oh my God. <laughs>